Nelly, come here. Come here, come and say hello. Come and say hello. Oh, come here. Come here. Oh, hello. Hello, everyone. Jim here from Forage Box and Forage Box TV. Thank you for watching. Uh, welcome to part two of the frugal foraging series. This is a very small uh, video series, if you like. Basically showing people that even in the depths of winter, which it is now, you can see I'm togged up, there are still wild edibles to be found. And more importantly, these are very easy to ID things, things that you probably already know anyway. And I'm going to do uh, a very short recipe at the end of each of these videos with those said ingredients that is cheap. Things that uh, allow you to save money. The whole point of this, uh, of foraging, is, well, actually, there's lots of reasons why people go foraging for well-being and for health and for... Uh, all the rest of it, but uh, times are hard and there's been a bit of attention in the media recently about uh, the frugality of, or the, the need to be frugal at the moment. So uh, this is an episode that's going to be focusing on dandelions. Uh, we're going to be making a little bit of a stir fry at the end with very cheap supermarket ingredients, things that you can easily buy uh, in your weekly shop, but it allows you to supplement those things with stuff that you can find in the wild for free. So, let's get cracking. Gratuitous mushroom shot there. So they do its spore dispersal. So a quick word on where we are. I'm down by a sort of scuzzy river section next to an industrial place. Uh, I'm here with Doggles, she needs a walk every day. And the reason I've come to these parts rather than anywhere particularly picturesque is basically because criticism of people who go foraging is very easy to do. Say, ah, oh, well, you've got access to loads of land or, uh, you know, you live in the countryside or anything like that. I don't. I live in South Manchester suburbia, not particularly posh suburbia, uh, and have access to green space. I've taught in uh, the centre of the city before and there's green space there. I've lived in centres of cities where there's been space. So all of these things do have uh, green places and you're allowed to go foraging there. The, the law lets you go and do those things. I'll, um, I'll cover the law in another video, I think. Uh, but it's very easy for people to get out. It is also just as easy to be cynical about where you can go foraging. So uh, my suggestion would be uh, ignore the naysayers, the people criticising uh, the potential of foraging for your own food. This is not meant to be an entire, you know, you're not meant to base your entire diet necessarily on the wild. That's not, re that's not a reasonable expectation, nor would it be particularly interesting. Um, but with a little bit of, you know, I've got to go and take the dog for a walk every single day, as I'm sure many of you do too. Uh, I've dropped my girls off at their uh, preschool every single morning, so when walking home, I can walk through these green spaces rather than along just along the typical pavement. Even if I did walk along the pavement, I'd walk past a couple of parks, and if I wanted to, that'd be somewhere I could go. So that's a, a nice space uh, for people to consider. As it happens, I am just going to flip the camera around. You can see the sort of industrial scale of the sort of drainage ditch river here. There's a nice shopping trolley there, just a really picturesque shot. Um, you have to just be a bit careful where you're picking from. I would always recommend picking away from water sources that are in uh, the centre of cities just because, you know, this is an industrial or relatively industrial area. You don't really want all the contaminants getting into what you're doing. So pick safely, pick from areas that you know are clean. And to be honest, uh, try not to think about what's going into your food too much because everything that you buy in the supermarket and indeed any other shop generally is grown in all sorts of weird environments. Uh, so that's usually my line. Right, uh, Nelly's getting a little bit impatient with her tennis ball over there, you can see. So uh, we're going to make a start. Let's go. Nice to see our poet laureate has been through here. Lovely one word poem there, just uh, expressing how they feel. Lovely. Well, we found some dandelions. Dandelions, very easy, very recognisable. This one uh, is not particularly toothy, you can see the toothed edge, uh, but very easily recognisable. Obviously the flowers are the easiest thing to recognise. I don't think you're really going to find many flowers at this time of year, although it is uh, a weird year in terms of weather. Um, quick word on dandelions, they're very, very nutritious. 
Uh, they are a bit of a, a diuretic, so if you eat loads of them, you'll probably end up going for a wee, but that's not necessarily a bad thing. Um, some people think that they're quite bitter. Now, that is correct. I don't know if this is going to catch her on there, but can you see the... No, it's not. It loves my face too much, but can you see, if I do that, there's a sort of white latex that gets formed. I wonder if it forms on my finger. Anyway, you'll just have to believe me. There is... And uh, it's that latex that's the bitter element. So if we're eating this as a salad leaf, yeah, you'd remove that central vein where the majority of the latex is. But actually, for the purposes of our stir fry, bitterness is a great thing to have in, um, in lots and lots of cooking. And that astringency, the excess of bitterness, does break down in cooking. So we don't need to worry about it too much. Uh, what we're going to do then is going to pick a few of these. Uh, that'll be the next shot you see. It will be me artistically picking some and putting some in a tub. Um, you'll notice this one is nice and clean. It looks uh, in good nick. On the contrary, you can see this one here. This one's starting to sort of look a little bit speckled and a bit knackered. I'm um, obviously, you know, I've picked this one here for, for the purposes of this. These are the ones that I'm going to leave behind. There's really no need to take anything that doesn't look appealing to eat. Um, even in winter, there's plenty of stuff to find. So if we spin you around very slowly, you can see this is a nice healthy plant and the ones down here not looking particularly great so we'll leave them where they are You'll notice uh, when I come to pick things that I'm deliberately only picking a few little leaves per plant. That sort of goes without saying. If you take the whole plant, it's really not going to do very well in terms of uh, survival. So it's best to leave a lot more than what you take. That said, dandelions are so resilient. So whilst I can't encourage you to take lots and lots of uh, uh, dandelions, for example, you might have a load in your lawn or your garden or something like that. And if you keep picking those leaves, I pretty much guarantee it will keep growing back and keep growing back and keep growing back. What you must never ever do is uh, spray any weed killer on it. I think weed killer is uh, one of these things that will be looked back on in a few years time as to say, why did we bother? Why did we bother killing all these so-called weeds? Um, when actually we could have eaten them. That's the whole point of it. So I'm uh, going to keep walking. Hang on, have I lost the dog? No, there she is. Happy dog. So. I'm going to keep walking, going to keep filling my tub. I'm not going to do the entire picking on camera just because that will be quite a tedious video if it's not already. Thanks for staying tuned, guys. Uh, and then we can sort of cut away to the kitchen. So, let's rock and roll. Very artistically done. Well done, Nelly. Okay, so we're back in the kitchen. Uh, it is uh, about half past seven at night, so it's dark, but it is tea time, therefore. Uh, just a quick apologies about the light. First of all, it's a bit darker now, so the light isn't as good. And also, I'm aware, since editing the other video, of how weird and flashy it is on these inside shots. I'm afraid that's because we have LED lights in the, uh, you know, the light saving, uh, sorry, energy saving bulbs. And the frequency obviously doesn't match with the GoPros filming. Uh, we'll just have to get used to it, I'm afraid. Um, so the plan is with the dandelions is to cook a dandelion stir fry. In a sense, we are using the dandelions in place of pak choy. Uh, it's a very easy thing to do, but again, these would work in any sort of format, anywhere where you've got that sort of bitter, crunchy green veg. Uh, just use some dandelion leaves. It's a nice, easy one to do. So uh, let's go and have a look at our ingredients. Okay, so first ingredient is simple shop-bought noodles. These are cheap as you like. Uh, what I'm going to do, I'm not going to do it on camera, but I'm going to pour some boiling water over the top of those, uh, cover them with a tea towel. That will soak them slowly whilst I'm cooking up all the other stuff. This will mean that uh, these are nice and soft and basically you can chuck them into your pan. There's always a risk with noodles that you overcook them and they just turn to mush, so this will uh, avoid that happening. Uh, I'm just going to pop them over there. Also, we've got uh, a mixture of chilli, garlic and onions all in there. We'll be cooking those off straight away. Uh, we'll be cooking them in some oil, cooking oil there. Uh, we've also got our dandelions. These are washed. Uh, again, not on camera, but I'll chop these up nicely so that they're sort of mouth size. Um, 
not that that's too important anyway. Uh, we've also got some sugar. This is regular cane sugar. For the improvement of the recipe, you could, I suppose, just use... Uh, you could use brown sugar or even honey, but trying to keep this simple and as cheap as possible uh, for the purpose of these videos, that's why I've gone for this. Uh, I've also got soy sauce. This is just regular light soy sauce. Uh, I'm not sponsored by Amoy, but there you go, light soy sauce. Uh, this is interchangeable, I guess, with any sort of soy sauce. I would just avoid using dark soy sauce. Really thick dark soy sauce tends to be too much for recipes like this. Um, and as a little optional extra to improve it, this is fish sauce. Fish sauce is exactly what it says. Um, it's a sort of fermented uh, sauce, very popular uh, as a sort of seasoning. And with these combination of flavours, it's not going to be too far off a pad thai. Um, which I guess is quite a sort of, uh, let's call it an upmarket takeaway item, but given that we're only buying onions, uh, this is red chilli, I put a lot of chilli in because I, like, uh, uh, I like the heat, this is a really cheap dish again to make, and it is only dinner for one, uh, uh, I'm not cooking for my wife tonight, um, so there you go. Right, let's get started with the cooking. Well, this is just vegetable oil, I think, and quite a lot compared to what we, um, what we did with the nettles in video one. And straight away, in goes our chilli, garlic and onion. Right, so I've upgraded the ring for two reasons. One, so I can position my camera, but also it's a slightly higher heat. I'd rather get this done. So you can see some of them are starting to go a bit brown and charcoal. I quite like that. You don't have to cook it to that point. You can, of course, just soften them up nicely. But I think that's a, a good place to be now. Time for the sauce. So. First things first, using a clean tablespoon, hello Nelly, get yourself a heat tablespoon of sugar, maybe, do you know what, let's go a bit, a bit more than that, twice as much let's say. So that can go in. Now, this is the, the part where we start adding our ingredients. So, for every spoon of sugar, you put in a spoon of fish sauce and... Full of soy sauce, and that's basically it. That's our sauce. Add to that now our dandelions, all chopped nice and rough, you can see, and these will wilt very, very quickly. Okay, I think that's looking pretty decent. So, what we're going to do is we're going to get our noodles, and they just flop in like that. It will still need a little bit of cooking. Not a huge amount, to be honest. And I'd like the, you see the water content, well, I don't know if you can see the water content. You see when I smudge my spoon across, there's still quite a lot of water content. I'd quite like that to cook off a little bit, really, to reduce. It will also cook the noodles, the final uh, element of the noodles. And obviously you can see that I'm doing this in a frying pan. Uh, a wok would be a better choice, really. Uh, I do have a wok, but I'm trying to show that this is an easy thing for people to do at home, rather than show off in a big kitchen. It's very easy to let recipes get away from you, but this is exactly what I'm trying to do. And you can already see, this is starting to look like a proper meal. Well, it is a proper meal. You see, we've got a proper meal on our hands now. I'd say that looks pretty good. In it goes. Try and do it elegantly, Jimbo. So here we are, slightly messily presented, but I've got my uh, dandelion stir fry there. And may I just say, it smells fantastic. So try not to absolutely stuff my face on camera. You can see, ooh, is that going to fall off? You can see all oh, <laughs> that. I'm throwing it on the table. It's very difficult doing this elegantly on camera, but there you go. I've got my dandelion. Superb, just incredible. Absolutely divine. The bitterness from the dandelion, but the vegetal green flavor as well, obviously with the chili and the sugar is, is helpful. You don't actually have to put chili, sugar, or even, uh, I said the fish sauce was optional. There's lots of things that you can add to this, take it away. If you had some broccoli or something, you can throw that in. Even if you had some prawns or chicken or whatever it is you want to add. But your greenery, you can get from the dandelions and I would suggest that's a good way of doing it. So there we go. I'm going to finish this and then uh, I'll catch up with you just afterwards. 
Hello, Jim here. Just letting you know that my GoPro decided to dial me at this point, so the final clip didn't say, which is annoying, other than to say thank you very much for watching, like and subscribe, all that sort of stuff, and tune in next time for part three, the th three of three that will be. Um, I don't think I need to talk for more than 15 seconds, so I'm just going to say bye-bye.